Okay, hello guys. We are back. We are now in chapter 4, section 3, Obligations of the Vendor. So, section 3 talks about conditions and warranties. So, we earlier talked about warranty in case of eviction. And now, we're going to talk about warranty against hidden defects. Okay? Alright. We are now in Article 1561 of the Civil Code. It talks about hidden defects. So, what's a hidden defect? Well, sa Tagalog, nakatagong defecto. Okay? A defect is important if it renders the thing sold unfit for the use for which it was intended. Number two, or if it diminishes its fitness to such use, it diminishes its fitness for such use to such an extent that the buyer would not have acquired it had he been aware thereof or would have given a lower price for it. So, when is a defect hidden? A defect is he, uh, a, a defect is hidden if it is not known and or and could not have been known to the buyer. Hence, there is no warranty if the defect is patent or visible, meaning, walang defecto kung nakikita. Okay? So, ang hidden defect, nag apply lang yan sa defecto na hindi nakikita. Halimbawa, uh, si S, nagbenta siya ng bahay kay B. S sold the house to B. After the sale, it turns out that the house had anai or termites. And it's in danger of collapsing. So in this case, the defect is considered a hidden defect. Alright? Requisites for warranty against hidden defects. Number one, the, the defect must be important or serious. Okay, let's explain that in spelling. The defect must be important or serious. It must be hidden. It must exist at the time of the sale. The buyer must give notice of the defect to the seller within a reasonable time. The action for rescission or reduction of price must be brought within the proper period and there must be no waiver on the part of the buyer. So, medyo madami. So, Article 1562 implies warranties of quality. Quality in, of goods include their state or condition. So, you have warranty of fitness, warranty that the goods are suitable for the special purpose of the buyer. And then a warranty of mercantility, warranty that goods are reasonably fit for the general purpose for which they are sold. 1566. The seller is responsible to the buyer for any hidden defect in the things sold, even though he is not aware of thereof. So kahit na hindi alam ng seller na may anay yung bahay na binenta niya, siya pa rin ang mananagot doon. Okay? Yung seller pa rin yung mananagot. Good faith cannot be availed of by the seller. Hindi pwedeng sabihin ng seller, In good faith ako, hindi ko talaga alam na inaana yun. Caveat venditor, the seller is liable to the buyer for any hidden defect in the things sold, even though he was not aware thereof. So, as uh, at this point, parang dalawang caveat na tayo, ano? I think ibig sabihin ng caveat is beware. Diba? So, Na, yung una is caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. Okay, ito naman is caveat venditor, the seller is liable to the buyer for hidden defects. Okay, yung caveat emptor, nag apply yan kapag yung buyer bibili ng mga second-hand goods or ng as is where is basis sale or dun sa mga auction sale as we discussed dun sa ating last meeting. Article 1567, in cases where the, there is a hidden defect, the buyer has the following option. Number one is the rescission plus damages. This is what you call action redhibitoria or number two, reduction of the price proportionately plus damages. Action quanti minores. Okay. Prescription period for the uh, action for rescission and reduction of the price is six months from the date of delivery of the thing sold. So, parang yung kanina din na uh, inaral natin uh, yung para sa sa bahay na, ay sa property na sobra or kulang 6 months lang yung prescription period uh, para uh, i-question mo kung kulang ba yung or sobra yung property na natanggap mo 1574 there is no warranty against hidden defects of animals sold at fairs, public auctions or livestock as condemned so, parang wala, hindi na rin naman ata uso itong fair 
na nagbibenta ka ng hayop siguro noong unang panahon oo sa public auction magbibenta ka ng mga hala, mga hayop mga animal mga animals I don't really know eh parang wala na rin natang ganito Love, livestock sold as condemned parang never pa ako naka-encounter nito sa 10 years kong lawyer probably because uh, siguro nasa sa probinsya ito ano, sa agricultural uh, side Article 1575, sale of animals suffering from contagious diseases shall be void. They are considered void because of lack of object. Animals with contagious diseases cannot be the object of commerce. Oh, okay. So, ano ba yung mga contagious diseases? Siguro, yan yung mga red tide. Sa bagay, ano, kapag isda, tilapia na may red tide, binenta mo, void yun. O kaya, foot and mouth disease, di ba? o kaya swine flu sa mga baboy o kaya kung medyo socialin ka eh, yung mad cow disease sa uh, Europe I watched a documentary about that before sa US I mean sa National Geographic so if you sell an animal with a contagious disease that sale is void kasi walang object Prescription period in case of animals within 40 days from date of delivery of the animal. Okay, so hanggang 40 days ka lang pwede magdumanda. Okay, and with that, we end chapter 4. So now we go to chapter 5, Obligations of the Vendi. The obligations of the Vendi is only two things. Tatanggapin mo yung item, accept the delivery, accept delivery, and pay the price of the thing sold. Magbayad ka. Well, that sounds very simple enough. General Rule, Article 1583, the buyer is not bound to accept delivery by installment. Okay, so dapat full payment talaga. Exception is kapag bumayad, pumayag yung buyer na installment. 1584 talks about the buyer's rights to examine the goods. This article contemplates actual delivery. Here, the buyer is afforded an opportunity to examine the goods to see if they are in conformity with the contract. So, the general rule is that the buyer has the right to examine or inspect the goods as a condition precedent to the transfer of ownership. Exception, when parties agree otherwise. So, that makes a lot of sense naman. Kapag may dineliver na item sa'yo, examine mo muna kung in good condition or hindi. Actually, yung magandang tanong nga yan eh, sa limbawa dun sa mga naglalazada dito. Diba? Kapag uh, dineliver sa'yo, inspect mo. Pag... Uh, Actually, hindi ko alam kung ano ang policy nila sa Lazada. Kapag uh, hindi ba in good condition, pwede mong tanggihan at ibalik yung item. Kung depende siguro yun sa terms and conditions na meron ang Lazada at, at nag-agree ka nung pinasok mo yun at nagpa-deliver ka sa courier nila or ginamit mo yung app nila. Pero generally, sa totoong buhay, kung walang Lazada-Lazada, bumili ka ng item dun sa tao. Alimbawa, bumili ka ng sasakyan. Tapos, ah... Uh, pinag-usapan ninyo, good condition, nung dineliver sa'yo, sira-sira pala yung sasakyan, pwede mong tanggihan. 1585, modes of manifesting manifesting acceptance. Number one is accept, express acceptance. The seller delivers goods to the buyer. The buyer verbally or in writing tells the seller that he has accepted the same. Yan. Okay, okay na tayo. Nagkamayan kayo. Okay, tanggap ko na yung item. Tanggap mo na yung bayad. So, okay na tayo. Implied acceptance, the buyer receives the goods and does not act inconsistent with the seller's ownership such as when the buyer tries to sell the goods. So, natanggap mo yung item, ang ginawa mo, wala kang hindi ka nagreklamo, at ang ginawa mo, binenta mo pa yung item sa third person. So, implied acceptance yan. Number two, buyer receives the goods and after a lapse of a reasonable time, retains the goods without intimating his rejection of them. So, natanggap mo yung item, tapos sabihin natin, one month na lang sa'yo, hindi, hindi ka naman nagreklamo. Ibig sabihin, although hindi mo sinabi na tanggap ko na, eh, impliedly, inaccept mo na siya kasi hindi ka nagreklamo eh. Stop ka na, kumbaga. Na 1586, acceptance by the buyer does not bar an action for damages against the seller. Ibig sabihin ito, porket ba tinanggap mo yung item na may depekto? Ibig ba sabihin yan, wala ka ng right na magdemanda? Ang sabi dito, it does not bar an action for damages. So, pwede ka pa rin magsampa ng kaso for damages 1587 buyer refuses to accept the goods but he is justified in not, not accepting them here the item is delivered to the buyer but the buyer does not accept them 
because it does not comply with the contract probably. In this case, it takes the goods as a bailey. At this point, the item is at the seller's risk. The buyer must notify the seller. If the seller does not take the goods, the buyer may resell them. Okay, so ang scenario na kinakontemplate nito is uh, halimbawa, eh, bumili ka ng grade A cement or grade A rice sa buyer. Nung dineliver sa'yo, hindi grade A. Grade D, mababang quality. Uh, hindi, hindi mo tinanggap yung item pero sabihin natin na yung mag-deliver sabi sir wala kaming magagawa dyan eh sabi lagay lang namin dito eh so in this case nag-intimate ka or sinabi mo na hindi mo tinatanggap pero sabi sa sa'yo ng delivery boy wala kang magagawa sir eh nagtaga-deliver lang kami sabi lagay lang dito so in this case the buyer accepts the goods as a bailey ano pang ibig sabihin ng bailey ang ibig sabihin ng bailey Siguro in layman's term, tagabantay. So, tagabantay ka lang dun sa items. Yung items na yan, hindi mo pag-aari yan. Tagabantay ka lang. Okay? Kapag nasira yan, sabi dito, it's the seller's risk. Okay? Pero may obligation ka na inotify yung seller. Sabihin mo dun sa seller, uh, Boss, yung mga items, uh, hindi ko ito tinatanggap ha. Kasi ang usapan natin, grade A eh. Ang dineliver mo sa akin, grade D. Ngayon, sinabi ko dun sa sa courier or sa truck na nagde-deliver na hindi ko ito tatanggapin pero ang sabi nila eh hindi daw nila iikukunin kasi may lakad pa raw sila or may kailangan silang gawin, may pipick upin sila, kailangan nila ng space dun sa may pipick upin sila from another uh, person at kailangan nilang i-load yung items na yun sa van nila. Kaya hindi nila pwedeng iuwi yung ano <coughs> yung items or ibalik sa'yo at dahil doon uh, yung mga items na iwan dito sa akin at uh, I will possess that or take custody of them as Amir Bailey ibig sabihin, titignan ko lang sila okay lalagay ko lang sila dito sa aking garahe pero kailangan mo tong kunin at palitan mo ito okay So, itong mga items na to, hindi ko ito pag-aari, ikaw ang may-ari nito. Kung may masira dito, ikaw ang mananagot pa rin. Okay, kasi, hindi mo naman tinapad yung usapan natin eh. Okay? So, ang mangyayari, kunin mo to, palitan mo ng yung pinag-usapan natin. Okay? So, yun yung part ng notification. If the seller does not take the goods, the buyer may resell them. So, sabi nung, nung seller, sa'yo na yan! <laughs> Ngayon, Anong right mo? So, sabi dito, the buyer may resell them. So, pwede mo palang ibenta. Pero pag binenta mo, ibig ba sabihin na hindi ka na pwedeng humabol? Parang wala namang nakasaad na, na barred ka na. So, siguro para hindi masira o mabulok yung items, hindi ibenta mo na lang. Tapos, uh, hindi naman ibig sabihin nun, eh, eh, wala ka nang hahabulin kasi nag-express ka na eh. Sinabi mo, hindi mo tinatanggap. ba? Diba? Okay, here the refusal of the buyer to accept the goods is not justified. Ito sa 1588. In this case, the title passes to him the moment they are placed at his disposal. For instance, when the item is delivered to the carrier, that means they are delivered to the buyer. So, sabi ng ano, yung buyer mo, ayaw tanggapin yung item, pero wala naman siyang right para hindi, walang valid reason para hindi niya tanggapin. So, yung ownership ng items, mapapasa ka agad sa buyer the moment they are placed at his disposal. So, nakadepende yun whether or not, ano, actually, medyo magiging argumentative nga yun. Eh, no? Kapag sinabi ng buyer, hindi ito yung pinag-usapan, sabi naman ng seller, hindi, yan yung pinag-usapan natin. So, mukhang magiging kaso yung ganyan. Mare-resolve lang yan ng judge. 1589, the buyer shall owe interest for the period between the delivery of the thing and the payment of the price in the following case cases. So, yung buyer mag magkakaroon ng ng interest, magkakaroon ng utang na interest from the time between the delivery of the thing and the payment of the price. Kumbaga na delivery na sa kanya pero hindi pa siya nagbabayad. Okay? Kung magkakaroon niya ng interest kung nakalagay doon na kailangan na kailangan may interest siyang babayaran kapag nagdelay sa ng payment. 
Number two, the thing sold and the delivered produced fruits. Okay. Okay. Number three, should the buyer be in default from the time, the demand of payment of the price? 1590, when, when buyer can suspend payment of price, if the buyer is disturbed in the possession or ownership of the thing bought, or if he has a well-grounded fear that his possession will be dis disturbed. Okay. Buyer suspend payment of price. So, siguro may babayaran, babayaran ng buyer yung binili niyang item, pero he is disturbed of possession of the ownership of the thing bought. Or he has well-grounded fear that his possession will be disturbed. Okay, medyo, ano to ha? Niche practice of law na ito. When 1591, when the buyer has reasonable ground to fear the loss of the immovable property sold in its price, he may sue for the rescission of the sale. Dapat meron siyang reasonable ground of fear na mawawala sa kanya yung item. Okay, na kanyang binili. Pwede niyang ipakansal yung sale. Again, very very argumentative ito. Okay, we have a quiz here. And uh, you should uh, try to answer this on your own. See if you learned something for this particular lesson. Okay, with this we end our uh, discussion. That's it. Thank you.